For today's lecture, we're going to discuss the basics of Mendelian genetics. Gregor Mendel was a geneticist back in the 1800s and he worked with pea plants. And through his work, we've discovered many of the inheritance patterns through dominant and recessive traits. So for today, we're going to discuss what are genetics, what is fertilization, the difference between genes and alleles, and finally, the difference between dominant and recessive. So, basic vocabulary for this section that you need to know. You need to understand what genetics are. And genetics are the study of heredity. heredity. Now, heredity, if you don't know, is the passing of traits from one generation to the next. So genetics is basically the study of how things are passed from one generation to the next. So how did you get your hair color? How did you get your eye color? And more, even more importantly, the different diseases and things like that that get passed on from one generation to the next. So what are the chances of each generation getting that also? <clears throat> and finally, a trait is a specific characteristic of an organism. So your trait for hair color, or specifically my trait for hair color, would be brown hair. And that's what you see. Okay. So if we are talking fertilization first, we need to remember what meiosis is. Okay. And review, quick review of meiosis, you take a single cell that has two copies of each chromosome in it. So we have two copies of our chromosome number one that each has two sets of information for it and two copies of chromosome number two that each have two sets of information for that also. As we pass that on we get one chromosome over one over here and one chromosome number one over here. We get one chromosome number one and one chromosome number two over here and finally it gets split, it gets split into four chromosomes each that have one set of DNA. So the purpose of meiosis is to cut the numbers of DNA in half so that when fertilization occurs, you take one cell from mom, one cell from dad, or vice versa if you want to use the blue and the red. So one cell from dad, one cell from mom, they each have half the correct number of chromosomes for a human being or for any organism. Fertilization happens, which is where we take the uh, two cells, join them together, and now you have the correct number of chromosomes in here. So fertilization is when two reproductive cells join together to make a new organism. So fertilization is what allows genes to be passed from one generation to, to another and for you to get traits from both your mother and your father. Now, on each of our chromosomes, we have genes and each of those genes has different forms of an allele. So if this is a chromosome from dad, and this is a chromosome from mom, you have the same letters as I've shown up here on those. Okay? The genes are the factors being passed from one generation to the other, so from parent to offspring. Now, you get gene A from mom, and you also get a form of gene A from dad. But those genes might not have the same form. So, the alleles <coughs> are represented as the different form of the gene. So for instance, an example of this would be earlobe shape. If you take a look at your earlobes, you'll notice that some people have a little flap here that hangs down below your earlobes, and you'll notice that some people have them attached, and I don't know if you can see close enough here, but mine actually are attached and run straight down into my neckline. So earlobe shape is the gene, and each parent will give you a different allele for that earlobe shape. It could be an attached allele, for attached earlobes, or it could be an unattached allele for unattached earlobes. And so that's where the different letters, uh, forms of the letter come in, uppercase and lowercase. So let's talk two other vocabulary words that deal with this before we get into um, some uh, pairing of genes or pairing of alleles. So we have two forms of an allele, you can have, uh, of a gene. You can have a dominant allele or you can have a recessive allele. A dominant allele is the allele that will always be shown, the trait that will always be shown if you have that 
um, that allele. And we use a capital letter to represent dominant alleles. A recessive allele is one that's only going to be shown if you have a, uh, two recessive alleles. If you have a dominant and a recessive allele, that dominant allele is going to be shown. So only if you have two recessive alleles are you actually going to see the recessive trait. So we use two lowercase letters, or a lowercase letter to represent recessive, so you would have two lowercase letters if, they were, if you had recessive traits. So if you look up here, you can see it, we have the two chromosomes. We have a lowercase letter here and an uppercase letter here. So this would be the recessive allele, and this would be the dominant allele for that specific trait because they're both the letter A, so we represent it with that. And finally, you can have different combinations of these genes and alleles within your body. So, we call those heterozygous or homozygous. You know from vocabulary prefixes that we've been talking about that the term hetero means different and the term homo means the same. So if we take those and we look at these different chromosomes, you'll notice that heterozygous is when an organism has two different alleles for the same trait. Okay? So that would be represented by, if we're talking dominant and recessive, that would be represented by a, an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter. Homozygous, same, the same is when you have two of the same alleles in your body for a specific trait or gene. So this would be either two uppercase letters or two lowercase letters. Okay, but two of the same. So if we look down here at some of these examples, we have a capital A, capital A, so this would be homozygous dominant. Okay, capitals mean dominant, two of the same for homozygous. This, uppercase A, lowercase a, this would be representative of a heterozygous organism. And we don't say heterozygous dominant because even though it shows the dominant trait, we're going to know it's showing the dominant trait because dominant is always going to show in the heterozygous form. Okay. Here again, uppercase B, lowercase b is heterozygous. Down here, lowercase d, lowercase d would be homozygous recessive. Uppercase H, uppercase H would be uh, homozygous dominant and lowercase e, lowercase e would be heter uh, homozygous recessive. So, we've talked about the Mendelian genetics, dominant versus recessive, how you can tell if it's heterozygous, homozygous, and what those different things mean based on genes and alleles.